Hey, quick question. Have you ever noticed that there's a section of additional outputs or render passes over here? Well, if you are wondering what it is and want to know what it does, you are in the right place. What's going on fellas, I'm Geo and this is Geo Creations. Let's jump right into the video. Depending on the software you use, there are different types of render outputs. Here we are going to cover the stuff from Lumia. This is the list of available additional output in Lumia. Sky Alpha Map, Specular Reflection Map, Lighting Map, Material ID, Depth Map and Normal Map. And I am going to demonstrate what each one of them is by breaking down one of my recent work. Which turned out to be like this from a render which looked like this. Let's see what each one of them do. But before that, consider joining this community by subscribing to the channel. Let's move on. Let's check all of the boxes over here while taking output. So we'll get all those output along with the render. Now let's slide through each one of them. You can also slide through the chapters if you only want to see a specific one. First, let's start with sky alpha map. You know, Lumion have a wide range of skies to select but when you want something specifically, we change it in the post anyway. But Going through all those tiny edges while selecting is a tedious process. That's where Sky Alpha Map comes into play. Bring in the sky you want inside Photoshop and put it on top of the image. Now bring in the Alpha Map and just select the sky area with a magic wand. Or if you want a precise selection, go to Select Color Range and now increase the fuzziness until you get satisfied. Now just hide the alpha layer, select the sky layer, click on the mask button and boom, the sky is ready. Now if you want some little adjustments, just unlink the mask and here you go. You are now free to mess up with this. So that's sky alpha. Now let's see what specular reflection is. This one is basically the materials that have reflective properties, so with this, we can play with the intensity of reflections in a material. Bring the layer on top and use the blending mode overlay or soft light depending on the context. Soft light is basically overlay with lesser intensity. Now you can play with the opacity to control the intensity. You can also use the layer mask to manipulate a particular area. Now let's move on to the next one, light map. This one is basically a 3D map of shades, shadows and highlights. You can also mess around with the levels adjustment layer by pressing Ctrl plus L to play with it a little more. You can control the highlights, shadows and midtones here and also you can control the lightness of the context. Now the most useful one, material ID. This one is a gold. And I mean it for real. Ever stuck in a situation when you want to change a material after taking out the render and you don't have time to dive into your rendering engine and take out another render. Even though if you had time, it's not worth going back and repeating the process all over again. This is where material ID comes into play. You can just select a material using a magic wand or for a precise selection you can select your color range, select the material and increase the fuzziness until you selected the whole material precisely. Now turn off the material ID layer. Now it's your wish, like you can do whatever you need to do with just that material. You can see here that I played with the lighting and color of a bunch of material. To do that, you just need to click on the adjustment layer of your need while the material is being selected. So that it comes with the layer mask, you don't need to worry about the rest of the areas getting affected. You can change the lighting, hue, saturation, etc. of a particular material alone. Kinda like doing surgery, right? Don't know if it makes sense. Anyway, you can also change the material on the whole. Bring in the material, select the material using the material ID, mask it and unlink the rear mask so that it stays in. And with the levels adjustment layer, you can control the lighting of the material according to its surrounding so that it looks so real also, you may need to mimic shadows if there is any. You can also use the brush tool over a new layer and clip it down by pressing Ctrl Alt plus G so that 
it stays inside the boundary. There are unlimited possibilities, you just need to get creative. You see what I did here? I've added some of them hanging down. Let me show you how to do this. Double click on the layer. Now the layer style dialog box will appear. Now in the blending options, we need to remove the part of the material from the highlight so that it looks organic and it's too easy to do that. Press Alt to split the slider into half for a smoother transition. Okay, that's it for material ID. Let's see what the depth map can do. As the name suggests, this one allows you to control the depth of field. The distance is represented with the gray shade. The closer the object gets, lighter the shadow will be. So now to make use of it, we're gonna feed this depth data into the lens blur option to actually control the depth of field. First, create a new layer mask for the base layer. Now select the thumbnail of the depth map layer while pressing Ctrl. This will make a selection around it. Now press Ctrl plus C to copy it. Now we need to paste it into the layer mask. To do that, click on the layer mask thumbnail while pressing Alt. This will open up a preview of the layer mask. Now press Ctrl plus V to paste the depth map which we have selected earlier. Disable the mask for now. Let's come back to our main layer. Now it's time to apply the blur filter. To do that, go to filter lens blur. And in here, select the source as a layer. Now it automatically considers the lighter areas of the mask as closer and darker areas as further, which means the image now has a 3D perception. Now you can manually select the focal distance or you can select the plane by clicking with set focal point tool. Increase the radius to see a more dramatic effect. Here you can see the difference. This is the before and this is the after. Now lastly, let's see what is normal map. As you know, this is a 2D image and what if we can perceive it as 3D? Sounds interesting, right? Like when you assign a material in Lumion, you can see that the materials that have a bump have a normal map attached to them. This is what helps to create your custom bump maps. You can select a normal map file and you have just created a custom 3D material. There are also other applications like using this in After Effects to kinda give an image a 3D perception. But we don't often use it. This is the least useful option in my opinion because Lumion can generate normal maps on its own based on the shades of any material. But it can be just me, uh, maybe useful to you. Yeah, and what do you think is the most useful one? Like, leave your opinion in the comments. My favorite one is the material ID. It did save me a ton of time and I'm pretty sure that you have learned something new today. So a like to this video will be great. And if you haven't already, come on, join the community by subscribing to the channel. Catch you guys in the next video. See ya.